Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are here to break down, react and discuss to the latest Rangers game. A Rangers game that I'm looking up to the heavens at people because that there might just be the best Rangers performance, the best performance for a Rangers side, a complete performance for a Rangers side I've seen since the Europa League song was cutting about in the background and we're all dancing, pulling German scants down people because that there was vicious, that there was rampant and that there is the Rangers side we know we've been capable of all season. And I know I get slaughtered on every night people make fun of me for saying oh you're a real fanboy and you give too much credit but I honestly didn't feel like I can give enough credit because you look at that performance, that is us at our very best two years ago before we ripped up flung everything out and became a slow, ponderous wonder inside you thought, what is we even playing it? That was us back at it and we're already starting to do this because, again, if you remember when Beal eh, arrived at this club, I wasn't expecting us to look this good so quickly. I was expecting it to take a bit of time to get these players into shape, but you talk about shape, you talk about energy, you talk about pressing, oil the park, three things we asked and screamed about all year long, people, all last year long, people. It's all there for us to be seen. So, I, Michael Bealman, thank you for giving us our club back to at its very best because that performance again was scrum dillyumptious. And I've got so much to talk about. I've got players, I've got hangs to talk about, I've got goals, I've got offside goals to talk about. Brief Craig, brief Craig. Oh no, I'll get, I'll get to it in a couple minutes. But I think we need to start off with the midfield too. All right, we need to start off, people, with Glenn Kamara and John Lundstrom. Welcome back, lads. It's been a long time since I've seen you because not only did we have St. Johnson Kamara, but we had Europa League Lundstrom, and they were just combining and shining together tonight. It was beautiful. It was powerful. Honestly, what a job Nicholas Raskin has done at this football club because if you've ever seen a performance of two players fighting for their lives for a position in a team, it was that right there. The wee pit bulls here, and these are jumping fences trying to run away from him and I have to give them a special shout I thought two of them were spectacular in the game especially Glenn Kamara who to be fair had a good game at the weekend but this was saucy Glenn Kamara and like, dropping shoulders dropping bodies no shooting because it's no St Johnson but didn't he take that away from him probably the man in the match and when, when's, the first, when's the last time I said Glenn Kamara was a man in match in the game for me probably just edges it over Golton, Barisic, who was spectacular as well, and a couple of other names. Again, the longer you watch today's video, you'll hear them, but I, I'm just bouncing here like I'm on a trampoline and I'm excited about what I'm talking about and I don't really know when I'm going to start. I don't know, maybe start at the start. CJ, honestly, I don't know why he's put up with me, people, but getting in to the game recap, we made two changes for the weekend. Cantwell and Jacko both rotated out. Good management for Michael Beale, and again, we unleashed... Europa League Lundstrom and of course we welcomed Fashion Sakala back into the starting eleven, and he just gave you a Fashion Sakala performance and trust me we'll get to it but I want to mention Hearts very briefly before we go anywhere and talk about the, the praise and start speaking about the individual moments because Hearts came into this game flying people there'll be people out there trying to downplay this result and downplay this Hearts side but this is a Hearts side that was undefeated in the last 10 in a row that's right people at least Sunday got 10 in a row and they hadn't conceded in the last four we took all that confidence we took all that belief that Hearts came into this game we had just ripped it right out of them we're sitting there looking like Shang Tsung sucking the soul out this heart side because within five six minutes you could see the white of their eyes it was like what used to happen when Mike Tyson used to go face to face with somebody in the ring and they'd blink we saw an entire Hearts team blink within six minutes because they knew in their hearts of hearts you're welcome for that that they could not cope with this Rangers side playing at this level because within four minutes we were after them we were chasing them doing we'd created three major opportunities within four minutes it's their grunt they've came in flying and that's what we've done to them, they couldn't handle the tactical tweak by Michael Beale as well. Brilliant bit of management, putting Sakala almost up right beside Morelos. It was almost a Brexit 4-4-2, if you will. And that just pinned him back enough to give Kent 
and Tillman that little bit more space. And if you give them even a tiny, tiny bit of space, they can punish you. And they feasted all afternoon. And I will get to the goals in a minute, people. But I want to mention Amalek Tillman. Yes, I know not everybody likes a laddie, but I feel like the tide is well and truly turning new people, right? It was used to be 50 50. I used to get a lot of crap for it. Then it went to about 75 25. And that seems about right. Now, I'd say it's less than 1% of Dinny rate this laddie, but genuinely, wrap your, round, wrap your hands around this laddie right now and just thank the gods that he is here, people, because this is a 20-year-old playing his first genuine season of football in terms of being a starter, and he just leads us in almost every creative category and some defensive ones as well. It's absolutely absurd what this laddie is doing, and he ran hearts ragged, the run down the left-hand side, where he ends up having a shot that's very well defended, to be fair, by the hearts defender, I think it's Sibic who gets there and gets a block, and good defending, but he ran it, and then he was passing him behind, and you can see why this laddie's putting out the type of numbers, the type of impact, I mean, including his goal this afternoon, this guy's got 10 goal contributions in 21 SPFL league matches, we have never ever seen that for donkeys, in terms of a midfielder, are able to impact and get a goal or assist nearly, what's that, one out of every two games? That's a joke, people, and his stats should be a hell of a lot better than that because seven, eight minutes into the game, he just takes a couple Hearts players for a walk down the park, down the right-hand side, slides a ball in for Sakala, six, seven yards out. Sakala does enough, he gets it on target, it is a good save, to be fair, but that well and truly should be a goal. Let's not be around the bush. More clinical players put in that way. We're celebrating and loving life. That should be another goal contribution for the lad. And if you pair that with just his last game, just looking, I'm not going back through the season, just his last game, he created four 1v1 opportunities for us versus St. Johnson. That's another five goal contributions in two games, people. His last two games. I don't know what... The case is, if we can make it happen, but genuinely pay whatever you can for this laddie, because he is him. We've not seen anything like him. He's only going to get better. And I, he's Malik, you know. Pay Bayern Munich the freaking dough. Five million pounds, five million euros, five million souls. Whatever you pay for that, it's worth every single penny, in my opinion. And that's all I'm going to say, because he created another opportunity for Rangers, even after the Sakala one, where he just beats a defender for fun, so nonchalantly. Plays Sakala down to the left. He picks out Alfredo Morelos. Morelos scores it. You're about ready to do this, and then the offside flag goes up, and then you watch Alfredo Morelos for a good four minutes. Just stare across the line, and then he baller. They come on side. Like, I don't understand. It's lazy for Morelos, if you want, but he made it up to us a minute or two later, people, as Barisic takes a sad one here, and listen, we've all had our problems with Barisic, and he's frustrated life out of us, but sometimes, again, you just got to hold your hands up and say he's been playing brilliantly, and I thought this was his best overall game, and I think this challenge almost helps him as well, because we know Barisic is a confidence player. When Sahan goes right for him, when he does well at Sahan, he flies and has a good game. When Sahan Disney, it's painful to actually watch. But he ends up taking a save one here, but it's brave, it's powerful. He gets back up, we win a free kick, and he just sees Kent. Kent says, just give me it. I'll beat them. I'm Ryan. Kent, that's what. I do. That's a lad to fool. He confers as well. And Barisic picks him out. Kent runs in the wing. Just skins the boy. Just make him look like a pedestrian out there. Honestly, they had the Hearts defence looking like NPCs for large majority of that game, wonderful step over, wonderful cross, he gets an assist, Morelos makes it up to us, it's one out with Rangers, it's all celebrations, sing songs and rainbows as Kent also picks up his 8th assist of the season and the way he's playing, slap a contract, give it to him as well, see, honestly, if we can wrap up Kent and we get Tillman, I'll be the happy, I might streak around Ibrox, people, I might, I just might, because this video would be ridiculously long if I broke down every attack in the opening 15 minutes, which again was breathtaking football for Rangers, I do need to skip over a couple of that, but again, giving full credit to Malik Tillman and Ryan Kent, they were spectacular, especially in the opening 15 minutes, but Harps did get one counter-attack, and I need to give McGregor a good shout out here, as it's a counter-attack from a corner, Barry McKay hits it low, probably does everything, but it's good position and good save from the now 41-year-old goalkeeper Alan McGregor, big save for him, and it gives us the platform to continue to dominate Harps, and 
that's what we did. Jump in 10 minutes into the old future we go. Just more great football. Tillman involved, just making folk look absolutely silly, man. It gives it to Kent. Kent tries to pick out Sakala. It gets it. Sakala runs through you. It's a brilliant finish to the newly crowned dad as well, by the way. Massive congratulations to the Sakala family. It looks like he's having his moment to do the celebration, but then that flag goes up for the second time in 25 minutes of a game and Again, this one's much closer, like Morelos one was just blatant laziness, if we're calling it the way we should be calling it, it's just laziness to actually the full degree, but Sakala is at least an inch off it, if that, it's again one of these things you need to zoom into the old air pits or something like that, he's nearly there, but again, I just think to myself, when you're such a fast player like a Sakala, you can afford to even give it another half yard. You don't need to be quite on the edge when you're as fast as he is. He just needs to maybe back himself a little bit more, but I'm sure that'll come with more confidence, especially if he's going to continue to play like this and be a focal point to be side. But aye, it is correct, so that's two correct VAR decisions. If you want two goals chopped off, but aye, it just felt sear and you're thinking to yourself, right, it should be free nothing right now, and we're at least going to get a setting before the first half ends, and we do people, and guess what, it comes from a bit of imagination, from a corner, it's no just out swinging corner for days upon days upon days upon days, it's actually a bit of imagination, it's a bit of creativity, we play it short, we end up whipping it in, Connor Golton so brilliant here, it keeps it alive, headers it back, into the area where Malik Tillman is there to do a kind of volley, if you want, into the back of it. That is now his 10th goal contribution again of the season. It's just frightening how he's impacted us. And again, he gets his goal that his overall performance is there because even I've not done him justice. And I'm a massive fanboy of this laddie, but just everything he was involved in, especially that first half, was just magic. Genuinely. And what was really great for me, right, is we've now scored two goals that have been held up. We've scored two other goals that haven't. But we didn't drop our performance. Yes, Hearts had one counter-attack from a corner kick where they nearly caught us, but it's a good save for McGregor. But we just genuinely strangled the life. And I don't know how we've not added to it before. In the last minute of injury time in the first half, there was like three or four golden opportunities to score. Sakala swings and misses. Ryan Kent forces a very good save. I think it even hits the post. And then some brilliant play from Europa League. John Lundstrom combining brilliantly with Alfredo Morelos. And big scouse John rattles one. And somehow Clark gets a hand to it as well. That was on the space of 60 seconds. And Hearts were begging for that, people. You know what I mean? They were begging for that half-time whistle just to get in. Because again... They couldn't do right for wrong, and that's because of Rangers. It's no, hearts never turned up, no, Rangers ripped the absolute soul and never allowed them to play, so... Aye, let's call it the way it should be called. That was incredible. 45 minutes for Rangers. Did I mention we hit the bar as well in the first half? Connor Golton, big heater. It was an unlucky effort. Again, another good ball cross into the mixer. But let's get to the second half. Let's get to another major incident in the 48th minute. Brilliant play again for Rangers. I believe Morello slides in another good pass, combining well with Ryan Kent. Kent runs down to the right. Tries to get into the box. There's a bit of coming together. We all think it's a penalty kick. And it's an interesting one, right? Because when you look at it, is Kent stepping that way to get the contact? Aye, but Harry Kane's made an absolute living of that for the last three years, if you've been paying attention. So I think the booking for a dive was actually harsh, but aye, I, I wouldn't be. It's one of the ends where you look at it and say, is that a stonewall penalty? Is the defender absolutely nailed him over that? No. It's no people, but as a penalty in modern day football and the way people do it these days, I, I guess you could say it. But I do actually genuinely believe that Vard got this one right not to really give it a penalty just because Kent kicks his leg, it looks as if, to get the contact then fall over. Again, I might be wrong, you can correct me in the comments section below, but I feel like VAR probably got it right by the way it should be done, but we've seen them giving hell, we've seen so many giving, and especially if you like Liverpool and Spurs, and everything. that's all. They do, the Salas, the, Kay the Canes, now, we've seen them giving, so... I understand it, but I don't think Ryan Kent should be given a yellow card for it as well, because that's simulation, there is contact there, whether he's made it or that himself, he's not dived, so that's how I feel about that, but again, it didn't bother us people, we didn't get the penalty kick, what we did get is John Lundstrom nailing the boy from the resulting free kick, winning as the ball, Ryan Kent jogging forward with playing Morelos in, who forces another good save for Clark. Nothing phased us. We just kept going, we kept going and kept going. We were so determined to punish this heart side and 
genuinely be that. I think it's been, what, like four or five minutes since we talked about an offside goal. Well, let's talk about the third offside goal of the game, then, shall we? And again, as much as I praise Morelos, especially a lot in today's video, he's just lazy again, man. He's... He frustrates the life at me because he is so much, so good at so many things. But so lazy and so all uh, aspects. Kamara, brilliant ball into him. And Morelos is offside. He's lazy. He's not tracking back and getting back onside. But yet he still picks out a wonderful through ball for Sakala, who again finishes brilliantly. Is about to have his celebration moment before seeing the flag again because Morelos is dallying. He's dallying and no bothering to get back onside. It's frustrating there people because it's such simple wee mistakes that honestly we should be putting these teams to the well and true sword of justice but we didn't quite date because of a couple of lazy silly wee incidents here or there but again for me his overall performance was great tonight it's just the wee annoying sides of Morelos that you're looking at you think come on man just just put a bit of effort in we need to speak about mere quality and it's going to come for CB number one I'm a Connor Goldson fanboy I've been slaughtered for years, but just see the importance there, man. Just him and Davies. Can I speak before I break down the actual goal and everything like that? If you look at the way Davies and Golton complement each other, understand each other, know when to go, when to push, when to sit back, who's going to be anywhere, you'd think they'd play together for years. And that was a compliment that we gave him and Big Phil Holander. And they didn't find it in the Balogun, even though they had their moments. They certainly didn't find it elsewhere. Well, other centre-backs we tried, but he's really fun. Whatever he's needed to find in another centre-back partner in Ben Davies, maybe it's the quiet factor, maybe they just let Golton bar corners or that, and that's the way it seems to work. But it's a phenomenal partnership that we were robbed of for the majority of the season because, again, you'd say they'd play, if you looked at that game, oh, they've played for years the way they were handled and marshalled that defence. But it's no people. They've played, what, barely 10 games together. That's a scary, scary fact. And I wanted to give them a special shout and. We're talking about Goldie, so you know what that means. The Tom Brady-esque long ball that only he can do in this league. It's wonderful. Out to Sakala. Sakala, it's nearly a carbon copy of the first offside goal. Sakala whips the ball in beautifully. Morelos is there, scores. But to celebrate, offside flag goes up for the fourth time. And I've got to be honest with you people. See if we got four offsides and a penalty took off us. I might have snapped that much, people, that I'd have just shaved the greys off. I'd have came here looking like Nicky Law people, right? If we'd have had four goals offside and apparently took off us, Fevar, full Nicky Law. I'd have just had to, people, because that's, for me, the only adjustable response. Adjustable? I don't know. Maybe this is an adjustable seat, CJ. Anyway, thankfully for everyone, this goal was eventually given as it's shown to be onside to Cala is. Onside, Morelos gets to do his knee slide and massive congratulations to him. Again, he deserved the goal. And yeah, that was well and truly game set and match. But the football was still there to be played. We had other magical, magical moments. Even when we made substitutions, the likes of Cantwell came on. Cholak came on. Scotty Wright came on. And I want to... I've gave Sakala a lot of praise here. But listen, see when Big Antonio... Tony, Tony, two goals, is running through on goals. You pass him the ball, Sakala. You didn't hit it for 35 yards out, son. Give the big Croatian the ball. He'll put it into the back of net. That was a major opportunity to add another dagger to the hearts hanging, but I think Sakala knew he was about to get subbed off, so he thought, I'm just going to rattle this. So You can understand it, but also... Just play it to the big Croatian. He's been off injured for a wee while. Let him get back in his confidence. But yeah, there was more gorgeous play, gorgeous touches. Cantwell was shining, I thought. Or what, what did I call him the other day? Toddwell? I'm getting worse, aren't I? But anyway, Toddwell had some nice moments and everything like that. It looked very good when he came on. Again, another encouraging performance. And he was directly involved in another chance. It was created for Cholak down the right-hand side as he tries to whip it across the goalie. But it's another very good save, to be fair, for him. And aye, just when you realise it was well and truly supposed to be 3-0, 94th minute, Barisic, who again had a great game, couple big challenges, couple big slides and that as well. Even kicked the ball at Hearts fan at one point who was giving him grief. I love all that. Be a shithouse guy. Be, if that's who you need to be to get to that level, be that guy, Barisic, please. Because it's night and day who you are 
when you're confident. But in the 95th minute, he just bursts a gut to get down to the left, whips in a ball. The Hearts player just slides at it. That's an own goal every day of the week, apart from this week right here when we are actually watching because somehow it hits off the goalie for about a yard out and Disney go in. But aye, that's it. I've not even done the game justice, people. There's too many chances, too many things in the noggin, but it is very late at night. I didn't want to take up all your day. All I'm going to say, people, that for me was a near perfect performance for Rangers and that's why we love the game to see our team reach that level now it's about finding it consistently and getting there but again I back the guy in charge I back the players that's there and it's just night and day now I want to ask you if you are still watching today's video pick a man and match it up genuinely for me if you're still watching just say a name because I can imagine Kamara maybe even Lundstrom or Tillman Kent will be in there even Morelos despite the couple lazy offsides Barisic could be there Big Goldie could be there as well with a goal and assist. The boy ran for his own box, faked the handball, ran all the way and nearly scored an absolute scream dream that would have made big magic Begera blush. People, he could be in there. And obviously the guy who's never spoke a word in his life, Ben Davies, was again a match. There'll be so many names mentioned this afternoon. So, aye, we've seen some bad things. We've moaned a lot this season. Let's see some positive positivity down in the comments. Give me a name. And let me know why you picked him as your man in the match. And aye, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to sleep very, very happy tonight. Can't wait to see your happy comments. And aye, sign Malik Tillman. <laughs> and get Kent on a new contract, Ian. With that being said, I've been Sage Over 92. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye.